everybody, I'm Jordan Weber, and today we're going to go over hip extension exercises to increase your space. So what we're going to look at here is a bench at a 45 degree angle. We're going to step over the bench and hold on to the dowels. What we're going to do is place one foot on the ground and one foot on the uh, bench here. What we're going to do is try to sit up nice and straight with a neutral pelvis, uh, a neutral spine here and extended right hip flexor. So what we're gonna do is hold this position passively for about two minutes and focus on our diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale for four, exhale for eight. doing here is we're relaxing in end range and hip extension and then we're going to start neurologically starting to control the intensity we're able to uh, produce in this area um, and we're going to control that from zero to 100 percent so what we're going to do is start pressing the knee the foot the thigh all the tissue on the anterior portion of that lower right limb we're going to start pressing it or pushing it into the bench you're going to feel a great stretch through the hip flexors on the anterior side, but you're going to feel that contracting. So you're going to feel that tissue contracting isometrically. So what we'll do is start at 10%, 15%, 20%, 30%. Begin to irradiate, really start pressing into the dowels. Use a wall if you don't have dowels. 30%, 40%. of your safest and greatest effort. We're going to hold it for 10 seconds and then we're going to try to lift away after that contraction. So we're going to hold that up to 100% for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Now try to pull away. Try to go deeper into extension. Try to get the foot off the ground or off the bench. Try to extend the hip. Keep going, 10 seconds, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and relax the foot down. Now as you saw, my foot kind of got caught up in there. Um, you might want to put your foot up a little bit differently, or actually maybe bring this down next time. So let's see.
What's up everybody? We're going to target hip extension today. So what we're going to do is take two dowels or press into a wall and put your bench at a 45 degree angle. We're going to step in front with our balancing leg and then extend our leg that we're going to be working. From here, try to find a position on the bench so your foot isn't secure. We don't want it stuck when we try to go into our, pal, our rails contraction just like that. So we're going to stretch passively in this position with a neutral spine here, extended hip, balancing leg is straight. We're going to passively stretch for two minutes. Then we're going to start amping the energy of the intensity of our lower anterior leg into the bench from zero to 100%. And then we're going to try to extend the leg and hover off of the bench in our rails contraction in that order. So passive, uh, progressive and then regressive. So pro progressive angle is the angle going this way. As you see from hip extension, I have a lot more angle going this way. I have less angle going this way. So that's why that is called rails or regressive angular isometric load. And when you press into the bench, that's your pal, your progressive angular isometric load. Because that's the progressive angle. This is the regressive angle. Working both angles in and around the joint to produce more space. So let's go ahead and set up. Inhale for four, exhale for eight, breathe and hold. Now you do want to try to find a posterior pelvic tilt. So if you need to, bring this down maybe just a little bit. You can also raise this up on some levels like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. Okay, so let's just rig this up a little bit for hip extension. Okay. We're going to begin inhaling for four, exhaling for eight, holding this position, trying to go for a posterior pelvic tilt if possible. You may have to lower the angle of the bench. I probably will next time. So we're going to inhale four, exhale eight. So in around two minutes, 
we'll do now is start pressing the foot, knee, shin, thigh into the bench from zero to 100%. So we'll start zero percent, five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty, twenty-five percent, thirty percent, thirty-five percent, forty percent, forty-five percent, fifty percent, fifty-five percent. 80 85%. We're going to go from 85 to 100% for our maximal, greatest, and safest effort and hold it for 10 seconds. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and keep it radiated and lift off. Go deeper into extension. Try to keep your posterior pelvic tilt. Deeper into extension. Try to get the knee and thigh off. Up. Five, four, three, two, and slowly bring it down. You can further your passive extension here. And you can repeat as many times as you need, okay? So why is extension important? Extension is really important when you're running, especially when you're sprinting. It's gonna give, give you all the power in your glutes that you need. You have to have the ability to extend the hips in order to fire that plane and train of anatomy throughout the entire body. going to be external rotation, passive range lift off. So what we're going to do is put the bench up to about 45 degrees and we're going to place our foot across the bench like so. Make sure that your hips are forward here and what we're going to do is going to be a passive range lift off from hip flexion. We're also going to have our knee flex as well. We're going to get into our max hip extension and what we're going to do is hold this position. We're going to take an inhale, irradiate, and try to lift that heel off of the barrier and then relax it back down. Let's try it again. Inhale, radiate, lift off. Okay. You can also do that in external rotation. Might have to set this down a couple, and what we'll do is just bring the foot across from here. Hold this position passively. Take an inhale, radiate, and try to lift the foot toward the opposite shoulder. And slowly let it down. One more time, inhale, irradiate, and try to lift off. Okay, in this position you can also do a knee hinge, okay, and go into max hip extension, and then external tibial rotation, extend the knee, and just demonstrate your car first, and then you can just start with
This is gonna be your combat stance using a bench. Do is press. What you're gonna do is put. What you're gonna do is put one foot on the bench and just bring the knee over the toe. Bend the opposite foot. You know, hold this position passively. You take an inhale for four, exhale for eight, and hold. And then what we'll do is we'll start driving the foot into the uh, bench press and then driving the toe toward the shin, okay? So first starting with our passive stretch for two minutes, hold here. Our paddles effort, press or gas pedal the foot down into the bench and then arouse contraction, toes up toward the shin. That will be a uh, combat stance for dorsiflexion of the ankle. <coughs> so, for, so for combat stance, dorsiflexion of the ankle, put one foot on the box or the bench, bring the knee over the toe, hold here. And this is also gonna give the back knee a little bit of breather here, because typically, when we do our battle or our combat stance, our back knee is flexed all the way, and sometimes that can put a lot of pressure on the knee or the ankle. And we really don't want to specifically target that side uh, if you're going one dorsiflexion at a time. So what we're going to do is hold here, inhale four, exhale eight passively for two minutes, and then gas pedal the foot into the. Uh, bench from 0 to 100%, holding that 100% for 10 seconds, and then pulling the toe up toward the shin in your rouse effort, and then continuing that process. Okay. <clears throat> for internal rotation passive range hold what we're going to do is place the uh, bench at almost a vertical angle looking at about 110 degrees and then what we're going to do is flex the knee and the hip into the pad and then from here take an inhale irradiate and then try to drive that knee into the bench furthering your internal rotation Okay. If you want to do a passive range lift off, hold as much as you can here and then let go and just see if you can hold that spot. That would be a passive range lift off. Okay. So let's try the other side. Passive range lift off with your internal rotation, Hold on, holding on to two dowels, face both hips forward just like you would be in a 90-90 position. <clears throat> For hip internal rotation using a 110 degree bench, <clears throat> For internal rotation using a 110 degree setup of a bench press, we're going to hold on to two dowels. And just get into the position that you'd be in for your 90-90. So the lead foot or the front foot and that hip is facing forward while the outside hip is going out 90 degrees. And from here, what we're going to do is set up, take an inhale, irradiate, and then what we're going to do is try to drive that foot up off of the bench press for your internal rotation. The reason why I like this again is because you're not putting any pressure on the opposite hip. Again, isolating that joint. Try that on the other side. Internal rotation set up. Also feeling that in the adductor there. Hold. You can also dry the tissue and stretch this tissue as well. You can do your pals and rails in this position. Or you can do your passive range lift off. Or you can do your passive range um, hold here and try to hold that position. Okay, and trying to prevent that foot from going down. So that would be passive range hold and lift off an internal rotation. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
here we have the bench set up. I have my lead foot or my balancing foot facing forward and the target leg, that foot is facing out. What I'm going to do here is stretch this position passively and hold and then I'm going to begin by pressing the knee and hip into the, uh, the bench press here up to 100% and then my rouse contraction will try to be a lift away from the bench press. Now if you feel like you can go move up a little bit forward and do that same thing, you can do it as well. Okay, so that would be another barrier while you're standing. Okay, so just getting your adductors, internal rotation here, also a little bit of uh, thoracic uh, rotation, breathe, and you can also press the knee into the bench, bring that foot out into internal rotation. <laughs> okay, for knee flexion, passive range hold, or do is place the dowels in front of the bench. You can bend the opposite or the balancing leg if you need to. What we're going to do is just try to flex that heel toward the glute. We're flexing the knee here. So this would be a passive range lift. This would be a passive range hold from knee flexion. Try that on the other side. Also add in a little bit of hip extension. You can also do internal and external tibial rotation here. So with a 45 degree bench, you can do a lot of different things, okay? One, you can do hip extension by placing the dowels over the bench, placing your lead or front foot, balancing leg in front of the bench, and extending your target leg for the hip extension. Holding this for two minutes, pals contraction, and then rouse contraction. Pals contraction would be going this way, so look at the distance between uh, this hip and this hip is a big gap. Now, going in the opposite way or further in the hip extension, that's going to be less in degrees. So that's why that's called your rouse contraction. Pressing in to the progressive angle is your PALS contraction. Okay, so PALS, press in, rouse, lift away. You might have to lower the bench. Okay, so that would be PALS and rouse hip extension. You can also do your passive range lift off, so just holding here and lifting off. You can do a knee hinge. You can do internal and external tibial rotation here. Okay? You can place this a little bit vertical. Okay? You can do passive range lift offs and internal rotation here, just like that. And you can also do passive range holds and knee and hip and hip abduction here. Okay? Trying to go up as high as you can and then squeezing into the barrier, holding up, squeezing, holding up, squeezing and holding and seeing how far you can make it up the bench. Okay? So that would be hip abduction and external rotation, hip extension, uh, hip flexion, what we can do is place this down a little bit okay into a zone where we think we can go into full hip, hip flexion that's probably a little too high <clears throat> so we'll place it right here place the dowel over the um the bench and remember you can modify the height by just going to the distance your hip feels comfortable in its end range. And then from here, 
Hip flexion, passive range lift off. Inhale, radiate, solidify your body. And then further that hip flexion, up to five seconds. And then back down. And you can progressively go up. Hold, inhale, radiate, solidify. down. That would be passive range lift off from hip flexion. So we covered hip flexion, extension, abduction, and external rotation. Another way to get external rotation is to place the dowels across the, um, the bench. Hold here. From here, inhale, solidify. Trying to get that foot to the opposite shoulder. It might not move, so maybe you go down a little bit further. Adjust, regress to progress, and progress to regress. Here we go, up. No, don't progress to regress. Regress to progress. So from here, external rotation, passive range lift off. Progress yourself by going up the incline. Here we go, inhale, solidify. Here, you can also do hip internal rotation, okay, setting up like your 90-90, pressing in, pals and rails, rails pressing in, rails going back, or you can try breaking that foot back out in the passive range lift off. So holding here, inhale, solidify, hold as long as you can, and then set down. If you want to make this more challenging, you can add in a passive range um, lift off or passive range hold. So what we'll do is go into our passive range in internal rotation, hold here, and when we let go, we're going to see if we can try to get that foot to stay where it is. Here we go. Inhale, solidify. Okay, so that's internal rotation, hip extension, external rotation, ad, uh, abduction and external rotation, and hip flexion. So we hit all sides and aspects of the hips today. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Thank you everyone.